listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. Welcome back, Leatherhead Nation. Here we are again, sitting at the Woo-hoo. firehouse kitchen table. Because this is the only show, the Getting Salty Experience podcast, that brings the firehouse kitchen table right to you. Self-proclaimed best fire department podcast, first responder podcast in the whole wide world. Right, Pete? Yeah, in the whole absolutely. Yep, absolutely. in the whole world. Welcome right. back. Look who's back. We got him back. Oh. Back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You got him back. <laughs> the duck hunter. What'd you yep. get? How many did you wind up with in the end? Uh, me personally, I think I got four. Four. Ooh. Not bad. Is that a good? Is that a good uh, number? Yeah, I mean, it depends. You know, I think the limit is like five five a day. But, oh, okay. uh, you know, I definitely shot more than that. But, you know. Uh, did you use my patented duck call? How did you do it? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no? no? I was good. I actually met some... Uh, some, some cool fans, yeah, oh, nice. some some fans guys out in Mississippi, no less. That were, hunt, that were hunting, they were like, uh, wow. you know, guys coming out of the woodwork, but yeah, uh, nice. It was Horn Lake, a couple guys from Horn Lake, my boy, uh, Clay the Cowboy, and uh, Big Tim, Mr. Tim. Tim. Ah, yeehaw, stick it in your grandma, yeah, stick it in your grandma, <laughs> my boy, Billy. Uh, Billy nice. White. Me down there, so uh, big shout out to those guys. I just got uh, I was gonna save this for the show, I was gonna say something to Ruffy before, hmm. but a little a little light bulb went off on me, Pete. Oh, 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 this, this, is, this is what it was like. You ready? Yeah, hit it. So, a couple of weeks ago, he goes, I finally got Chief Salka. Great, I'm like, oh man, we've been trying to get him forever. That's awesome. Yeah, when's when's he coming on? He's coming on the 18th. That's what <laughs> so I look at the 18th, right? I go, 18th. That's a Tuesday. We don't do shows on a Tuesday. Go, oh, he he mind Wait, wait, you. wait, wait, wait. He goes, oh, what, what, uh, no, what, the guy's true. got a busy schedule. He's got. A, what do you want me to tell you? He's got a busy schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so like two two weeks go by, right? And Ruffy goes. Oh, by the way. Yeah, by the way, I'll be uh, I'll be away duck hunting from uh, Thursday to Monday. <laughs> that's not how it went down. That's, it dude, that's where the out. light peaked. That's where the light bulb was over. I got you. Thursday to Monday. Come on, man. Come, Come on, on, man. I'm oh. like, I think he just pulled the Jedi mind trick on me, bro. You know what I mean? Tommy <laughs> gobbledygook. That's what <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, that sounds like some. That sounded right like some Tommy gobbledygook to oh, me dude. too. We'll just do it on your time. I mean, <laughs> Chief Salko's time is very the bright. best. Dude, the best defense, good offense. Because I'm like, oh, we have a show. What do you want me to tell you? The guy's got a busy schedule. I don't know. <laughs> and by the way, I'm flying out the next city. Oh, uh, well, I just, well, I you know what? This, listen, I've been waiting to get this guy out forever. I don't care if he comes out on a Wednesday. I don't really care. You know? It doesn't matter. But you know what? No. We'll all be flying out pretty soon to a oh, much warmer oh. place. Yes, warm. Mm. The beach, we got it all, almost 99% done. We got our tickets. The Get Salty Beach Party down in Naples at the uh, Del Boca Vista gang down there with Hank Molay. Oh, so yeah. get in touch with Alan Shup and my man Jose. And get your name on the list because soon we're going to have somebody standing at the door. You on the list? It'll be like Studio 54. Oh, you're not on the list? Sorry, you got to get up. And for you new guys, uh, (laughs) thank you, first of all, for uh, joining the party. Uh, Thank you for joining us here on the show. If you need to get in contact with Alan Ship or Jose Martinez, uh, go over to Facebook uh, Mm -hmm. uh, to the Getting Salty Fans page. Getting Salty Fans. All right. Check that out. All right. I don't want to keep our guests waiting because we've been waiting forever to get this gentleman on. We got to pay bills, though. Pay the bills first, Pete. You know how to do it. Well, you guys, of course, we know how to do it because we only get the best sponsors for this show. And our current best sponsor is Chief 360. Are your responders slowed down using outdated or unreliable technology? Chief 360 enhances operation with technology products that reduce response times and increase situational awareness. Chief 360 Station Alert is the most affordable and reliable alerting system on the market. Designed with health and cardiac wellness in mind, it uses escalating tones to alert and wake up responders. The system also uses both CAD and tone dispatching to ensure rapid, reliable alerting. Chief 360 Mobile offers an easy to use interface to get responders fast and accurate dispatching into the palm of their hands. When every second counts, rely on Chief 360. Check them out now at Chief360.com. 
Again, that is Cheap360.com. Great job. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Pete, also tell them before we could say, so somebody donate to the Super Chat. So tell them what that's all about. And thank oh, you very much. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, first and foremost, uh, Fire Dave 111, thank you. Uh, the Super Chat, guys, if you guys absolutely positively need a question answered, or if you just want to throw us a few shekels, it doesn't matter. It could be a dollar. We don't care. It could be $3. We don't care. It could be, you know, a million dollars. You know, I don't know if you want to be an investor. You know what I mean? An investor. Yeah. Yeah. An investor. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Nah, nah, listen, guys, anything anything helps. We really appreciate that. Keep the, the, the lights on and all that sort of stuff. So uh, hit us up in the super chat or uh, also head on over to Getting Salty Fans, uh, GettingSaltyApparel.com, where uh, you will find the coolest fire fighter apparel and accessories. Uh, that's how we support us awesome. around here. And we thank you guys all or hitting us up in the super chat. Thank you very much. Awesome. All right, Pete, let's get patriotic before we bring our guest Ooh, in. Ooh, I like to be patriotic, guys. Here we go. And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen, Amen Pete. Great job. Oh. And God we trust, baby. Awesome. Yeah, that's all right. right. So we've been trying to get uh, Chief Salker on for a very long time. We uh, we ran into him at the uh, show out in Indy. And uh, listen, he's a very sought-off gentleman, uh, sought-after gentleman. Um, so he's a 33-year-old, 33-year veteran on the job. Not only FDNY a firefighter during the war years, but also a lieutenant uh, for, what was it? Oh, no, it was a chief for 17 years. My bad. A chief for 17 years, a firefighter in the war years, 33 years on the job, an author, an instructor at Proby School, uh, the captain's management program, the battalion chief's command course. He's a lecturer on the circuit. So without further ado, let's bring in our guest, uh, Chief John Sulka. Hey. hey. Look at the hat. How did I do? How did I do? I did all right? Great, not bad. Not bad. I like that. Yeah, it gives a little credit, not too much. I like yeah, it. I don't, want to, I don't want to give too much. <laughs> Welcome you to know, the show, Chief. Me. We've been trying to get you on for a while. It's really it's an honor for us to work. Good. Appreciate it. Uh so Pete, let's do a little word of the day first before uh oh, mm, my you know word. what I'm saying. You know where I'm going. With all well, the alcoholics out there. <clears throat> for if you guys have just joined the show and you don't know what it's about we do have a little drinking game every time you guys hear this word or phrase of the day you guys take a sip and join in the fun and the word of the day today is first in last out <laughs> all right there we go all right chief so let's dive right in let's give it a little background on you where'd you grow up what got you into the job what made you interested in the fire service I grew up on Long Island. Matter of fact, I was, uh, I'm a buddy of Mike Dugan. He grew up out there, too. And uh, Mineola, Nassau County, I, was, I joined the Volleys out of high school and uh, had fun doing that. A buddy of mine, Richie Bonnets, actually was twisting my arm to join. Take the test. Take the FDNY test. His, uh, his girlfriend's dad was a chief. And I wanted to be a Nassau County cop. Bad. I went to college for criminal justice and everything else, man. I, I had that. I had that. I, I, was, I said, I'll, I'll stay in the Volleys and I'll be a cop. He said, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Take the test, take the test. I think the last day for the filing for the 77 test, we drove into Queens, stopped at some firehouse. Some guy rummaged around the house, watched, said, ah, oh, here's our last <laughs> <Here's an application." laughs> We filled it out. We went down to the post office, dropped it in. I got on a year ahead of my buddy. And, uh, <laughs> That's, and every, every, every person who's ever got on this job, on this show, has something similar to that where it was just like luck of the draw. Oh, by the way, I have one more application. I who was the guy who said his neighbor and told him to take uh, yeah, the yeah, job back in the '60s, like so right? Times. I mean, yeah, every time it's the same story. So he was like, working yeah. nights or something. He came home and his neighbor had an application for him or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As that a matter of fact, when I was growing up in Mineola, uh, Louis Garcia, who retired as the, the chief fire marshal, he was a fireman in 102. And I knew he was a fireman, so I used to go down, visit at his house. And, and I rode him a couple of times. He, he brought me in for a couple of night tours in 102 truck in Brooklyn, Bedford Avenue. Oh, nice. Was, it, was, it was quite a show. Quite a show. Yep. I mean, growing up in Mineola, though, you were two blocks away from the PD over there in Nassau County PD. So I can't I, I can't blame you. You know what I mean? It's right there. All the courts, yeah. all the administrative buildings. So, Did you have any any family on the job at all? Negative. Nobody 
nobody knew nothing about it. No, nope. <laughs> really. So you were the first. Okay, my, that was like us. I'm the first, and maybe the last. Well, one of my kids <laughs> got on a job. Actually, one of my both of my sons took the test. One of them's a, a major in the Marine Corps. He was like number really? 89 on the fireman's list, and he turned it down because he was already in the Marine Corps. The right. other guy took it, and when he went in for his final interview, they took his military t away because he never actually got activated. He was in the reserves for six years, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, traveling Africa here and there and everywhere, but he never actually went in, into harm's way. So they took the points away, and right. that was the end of that. He went down oh, south. Man. He got on a job in South Carolina. Oh, good. So he's watching down in South Carolina tonight. I to marry a gal, have my first grandchild for me, and everything else. So oh, nice. Nice. Look at you. So you got two boys. In Were you in the service at all, Chief? Negative. Two boys in the Marines. That's it. And a haircut like that. A haircut, you, a crew cut. you know what? <laughs> Somebody's got to look squared away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Right. <laughs> Why not? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the pre show. You got to have the crew to cut. You know what I mean? My crew abandoned ship, so I got to. Your crew was able to. Oh, shit. Yeah. You know, they all first, they all first in, though, Pete. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> oh, me. Yeah. Oh, Wait. there it is. He got it. He's got to cut that. It's not first in. It's first in last. Yeah, it's too long, bro. I can't do the book. Right, right, right. oh, okay. <laughs> you, you confused me there. I was like, wait, is he? All right. Is he talking right, so to the yeah. Marines? I'm not. I'm not sure. So your friend twists your arm. You get in before him. You get it. You get on in 1979, and Proby School. And the first, your first stop is Engine 34, which is somewhere around like 38. 38th Street, 38th Street, 38th Street, much 38th Street between 9th and 10th, right at the Lincoln Tunnel. You know, two. I tell two stories about that that place. The first one was, I don't know if you can even relate to it, but I was so excited to be on the FDNY. I had been a fireman. Actually, actually, I, I left the volunteers, and me and my buddy went to Florida. We got on a job in Titusville, Florida, small. Place what? Really? You know, we were on a job for a, a year and a half down there, and then they called us, and we both came back. So now I get on the FDMY, which I've been waiting, waiting, waiting for, finally after taking a test. And I and I knew nobody. I was nobody. That was the end of that. I go to 34 Engine. I must have been a hole there. There must have been an opening that dropped me in, right? <laughs> I mean, I walk in the place. There's a rig, FDMY. I'm in the FDMY. I was so excited and so disappointed at the same time. <laughs> it was the smallest <laughs> engine in Manhattan. I mean, it, there's no, there's no yeah. sugar coat in that. It was the yeah. smallest <laughs> engine in Manhattan. I was Tell us how it really is, Chief. Really, don't <laughs> Gene Carroll yeah. was my captain. Gene Carroll went on to be a staff chief and passed away. His boy's on a job somewhere. <clears throat> but great, great guy told me, listen, if you want to get out of here, I'll help you, but you can't leave yet. you got to stay for a year till you're off probation. That's and somehow, really Pete Riccardi, Pete Riccardi was a, a big, tall Italian guy from Six Truck. He was the Manhattan Borough Trustee. Somehow he got me out of 11 truck and got uh, got me out of 34 engine into 11 truck. 11 I don't truck. know how it happened, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. And they were pretty busy, right? 11 truck, especially. Oh, I know my, fa my father was, was rocking rock and rolling when I got there. Absolutely. Yeah. Lower side. Yep. Yep. And uh, any any jobs that stick out in your mind there when you're in 11 truck? Or, like, I mean. Oh, who was the guy there? I mean, obviously, you, was, you got there when? You were just on probation, off probation? or Just off nah. probation, like 81, 80 or 81, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was still it was still happening. I mean, it was busy earlier, but it was there was still plenty of fires, vacant buildings, and overdoses and shootings. And it was yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. like you know, you, you tell that to your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law, like you say that vacant buildings, shootings, and, overdoses. and overdoses. It was heaven. The yeah, was heaven, Chief, you know? My mother, uh, my mother used to take me down to Avenue A. My uncle had a glass store there, and I used to work there. It, I think it was 83, 84. Oh, my God. It was, wow, like, it was still it was, shitty. Yeah, it was, it was pure crap. I mean, pure crap over there. Oh, all good firemen there. All good firemen. I was going to say, who, 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 was some the guys, truck. Yeah. who was some of the guys there that stick out to you? That you it was the uh, Richie or? Bottle, who just passed away a year or two ago. He was like the, the chauffeur in my groups. He taught me a lot. Great great Richie Bottle story. So you all know the story, but you never give your tool up. I mean, that's like universal, right? So I'm the probie. I get the can and the hook, and we had a top floor job, and we're all up there pulling ceilings. And Richie's in the other room. There's like 50 guys there. There should have been two, but there was like 50 guys there. Richie says, uh, "Well, I'll tell you the Sammy story in a minute." Sammy, give me a hook. That was my name there. I said, "No, Richie, what do you need? come in here. Just give me the hook. I just got to pull something. I got to." I said, "I'm not giving you my tool. What do you need me to do? I try to make." He said, "Stop right there. Just give me the damn tool." <laughs> Asshole. 
I give him the tour. <laughs> what? Whoa! <laughs> out the back window. <laughs> and that's what he does. He turns around and says, asshole. <laughs> down six flights of stairs. Out the front door. They're all standing there. The chief, everybody's looking. Down the alley. Out the back. Get my hook back up to the top floor. So, great, great story. Great story. Hey, Louis got, Louis I've, got never, story I've never like heard that. that. I've never heard that type of story before. <laughs> oh, that's a real story. That really happened. I don't know. My... my I mean, imagine, imagine if someone can. <laughs> imagine if someone threw your can down the hallway. You know, I mean, my, my first yeah. lieutenant, one of my first lieutenants, he said, to, "We get a job, fires out into the hallway." He said, "Give me the can. Just reach in there with the hook, close the door." So I put, the, give him the can. I reach in, I close the door with the hook. I turn around, and all I hear is ding, 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 ding going down the hallway. <laughs> it's the can. So he looks at me and says, "Don't ever give your tools to anybody, kid. <laughs> Go get your effing can." Yeah, right. yeah. The captain there was Ronnie Hanson. Ronnie Hanson was a tough, tough, tough old bird. Not a very nice man, but a tough old bird. He was he was a decent captain. But no, no matter what you did, it's sort of like being married. No matter what you did, it wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And, uh, right. We went to a box one time. Again, I was still a probie, can and a hook. And for so, I think we must have picked up another box just when we were coming out. And I leaned my hook against the, the park car to put the can. And I got in the rig and we drove away. Ah. And two blocks, two blocks later, I like, said, oh, shit. Yeah, to the yeah. guy right oh, now, shit. Oh, shit. Holy shit. shit. I, left, I left the oh, hook back in that last box. He said, what fucking Holy shit. I don't know how we did it, but somehow we got word to bar or to go back there. And he never noticed it. Somehow we stopped there and I grabbed that hook. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The guys took care of I would have never left there. I, I, I don't know what would have happened. The guys took care of Did you, did you buy that guy lunch at least? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Goes to belly. Good uh, man. Chief, just now when you when you you had that face like this, you were like this. Right? <laughs> I've seen that. You know, how many times have you seen that where a guy left his yeah, helmet back? Up right? on my neck when I tell oh, that story. Yeah, yeah. Still, to, you know, even when you think about it, you're just such a scary feeling, right? Oh, my God. Because you don't just don't want to make the guy. Nothing like good, good, tough bosses that you're afraid of. Everybody this year, yeah. you know, everybody nowadays mm -hmm. wants the soft, the soft touch bosses. They want to play kumbaya and, and, and sit around a campfire. No. Nothing like a tough boss in a firehouse, man. Yeah, Nobody does nothing wrong. Anyway. How, how afraid were we of Dennis Murphy? We bro? say it all the time, Chief. We were so shit. afraid of, of, of Dennis Murphy that, I mean, I wanted to make that guy, he was like my father. I wanted to make him so proud, like anything. Yeah. I mean, because I was so nervous of him. You know what I mean? He never yeah. came. He would come out to the bar. If we had a boys' night out, he would come out. He would maybe have one drink if he did drink, and he would leave. He never hung around. Uh, like, well, right. You, you know. don't stay too long. Everybody goes through the mirror. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the big question. This is the one I love. I got to hear this one. Ready, Rafi? Yeah, yeah. 11 truck from 34 to 11 to rescue three. So you can tell us how that happened. We'll make up our own story, but you can tell us how that happened. <laughs> I'll be damned if I know. Oh, let me, how, let me how did you decide it? How did you, you even know, decide I'm it? I'm an 11 truck now and, and working our asses off. And I made, you know what? I, I, I made a couple of good, a couple of good moves. I made a couple of little grabs and stuff while I was down there. It was just all very, and, and we all know that from being a firefighter. You could be working with Tom Neary and you can make the left. He can make the right. You can make the grab, yeah, right? All, yeah. I mean, it's all a matter of chance. I mean, if you're an asshole and you get trouble with your mask and you never go in, it'll never happen. But the rest of us that love the job, Anybody can make a grab, right? So I, I got pretty lucky down there. And so I was there for th whatever it was. I was in 34 for a year. I was there for three or four years. I had like five years on a job. And I'm just thinking, what's next? What can I do next? You know? And I mean, I knew about the job. I studied the job before I got on. I knew there was rescue and everything else. And so I stopped the rescue three one time on the way home. 11 trucks on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I live up in Orange County, 60 miles away. I had to drive past rescue three and every other company in Manhattan, mm -hmm. right? Right. So I stopped there and I made my contact with, with Captain Billy. And, uh, you know, I went on a list and a blue stool interview and all that same old bullshit, just like everybody else. And then you got to keep track and you got to track them down. If you never call them again, you'll probably never go unless you're something special, you know, which I was not. Uh, so I'd stop there occasionally. And one and one day I was on the way home. And uh, who was working? Jack McKeon. Jack McKeon was, was an officer there. His I think it was his uncle or his father. The, the, the fireboat, John D. McKeon was named after. It was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, killed yeah, in an yeah. explosion. It blew the pilot house off the boat and killed him. Anyway, Jack McKeon was a lieutenant there. I happened yeah. to stop there one day when he was working. I said, how you doing? I'm John Salka. Captain Billy's got me on a list. I'm just checking to see if anybody's leaving or any movement coming up. Oh, good, John. Come on in. Sit down. You know. And he said, you know what? The captain's coming in tonight. Let me give him a quick call. And he comes back a minute later and says, guess what? You're in. 
I said, what? <laughs> you're in. You're in Come rescue. on. So, you know, whenever it worked out, come in a week or we'll detail, you know, it was right, on an right, onion. Right, right, you right, know, right, right. But it ended up working out. It ended up working out. Like I said, I wouldn't have took me if I was the captain of Rescue 3. <laughs> <laughs> well, Why well, listen, did, it's squeaky wheel, wheel, right? Did, hey, did, I'm, were, I'm thankful. Uh... I'm thankful. Did think- Maybe the crew cut did it for me. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it did hurt. Did, did you think they were kind of fucking with you or or at first, or was it like for real? No, no, no. It was no, legit. No, I mean, no. this, was the boss. this was a lieutenant. It wasn't oh, like some okay. asshole. No, no, gotcha, no, no, gotcha, no. gotcha, 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 you gotcha. Know. Funny story, though. Funny story. It happened in this firehouse. There, uh, 45 truck, 93 engine, and a rescue, three companies and a chief, 20 guys sitting down for dinner every night. It was a great place. And uh, Patty Barr, you know the name Patty Barr? Yeah, of course, of course. Patty Barr was in 45 truck. And uh, one, and the probie got a new engine one day, a new engine, a new probie one day. The engine got a new probie one day. And he was coming in for his first, like, knock on the door, say hello, right? And they all knew he was coming. So he comes in, he knocks at the door, they greet him at the house, watch all, oh, Lieutenant, uh, what was his name, an Irish guy with a brogue and everything else. I'm trying to think of it, an older guy. Great, great guy. Seamus. He was the that day. He was down in the kitchen drinking coffee. They sent him up to the office. Patty Barr is in the office with the door closed. This kid is standing outside the office. Patty Barr is in there with the lieutenant shirt on, screaming at another fireman. You piece of shit. If I ever see you do that again, I will throw you out the second floor window. Give me 20 right now. This is with the door closed. And that's another thing. You're losing the day's pay. Get the hell out of here. The door swings open. This guy comes running out. She's the program. Runs the other way. Patty Barr steps out of the office. Who the hell are you and what do you want? He's like, Oh, Professor, I thought on a Smith though. Reporting, get your ass in here. <laughs> Two minutes later, Lieutenant Mulcahy shows up, and he's like, "What are you doing, Patsy Bar? What are you doing in my office?" And, and he blew the whole thing. Oh up. You know, my like, this god! Kid was sitting in his pants. He thought he thought this was. Uh, I tell you, there's so many of those stories. Like when the when the probie first shows up, right? When the guys go up in, into the office for the first time, guys do that. They they. You know, either they're naked, yeah, yeah, they're they're naked or something, right? Exactly, exactly. Oh my god, that's freaking great! I don't think you could do that. I don't think you could do that. After you found out you went to three, what was it like going back to eleven truck? That's what I was going to ask him, Coop. Actually, (laughs) say again. I said when you found out you were going to three, what was it like going back to eleven truck to tell them that you you were going up to rescue three? You know what? If, if anybody here has ever left anywhere, whether it's on a promotion That's or whether you transfer, transfer's harder because transfer's saying, I want out of here, right? Get right, promoted. Right. People different. take it personal, right? Well, some guys do. No, nobody really there did that I know of, unless they were pissing on my food before they put it in front of me. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know what? Like uh, two or three guys, uh, uh, Danny DeFranco, Danny got killed. His father, his, no, Davey got killed. Danny was the, the UFA guy. But right. David DeFranco was a friend of mine in 11 truck. He left and went to rescue too. Another guy left left 28 engine or 11 truck and, and went to rescue one a few years. So a couple of guys have left 11 and 28 to go right, to right, rescue. To go to rescue. I wasn't like the first guy to leave to go to a rescue. You know, I got all the rescue bullshit from everybody, but uh, it, it worked out all right. I always had a good relation with everybody there, even after I left. Yeah. But was it, but did it take uh, a little getting used to going up there? I mean, you, you, you're in 11 truck. You're going to a lot of first do work. <clears throat> and now going to the rescue, did it take a little adjustment, you know, not being that first do company? or finding- Absolutely. And I missed 11 truck because it was a good first do company. We only had, oh, geez, 60 first do boxes or 70, some ridiculously low number. In 74, 76, they were number one in the city against yep. companies that had 300 boxes. Like 111 truck has 300 boxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Has 60. And, and they beat him out on runs, you know. Jeez. But like I said, I missed the place because there were good guys there that, that I always respected uh, un, un, until today even. And uh, But it was it was nice to move on and go. The rescue was different. You know, you're going a lot of jobs, but you weren't working at all of them. You right. Job, I mean, but we did haul them in the Bronx. How, how could you beat that? You, know? you can't. Yeah. But was there any time where you were like, yeah, maybe I missed the first to work. Maybe I should have nope. stayed there a little longer. Nope. I never left at all. I never, and a good friend of mine, who I will not mention his name, Came to Rescue 3 when I went to Rescue 3 from the Bronx, from a truck in the Bronx. And about six months later or three months later, I might have it wrong. He went back. He, he said, you know back. what? I'm going back. I think the guys over there were really riding him. And he, and he went back to his company. And believe it or not, changed his mind again. And Captain Billy took him back in the rescue. He ended Is up that right? Company. Really? <laughs> I know and Ray Strong. Come on out of there and study together and everything else. He's yeah, a good yeah. friend of mine. Ray Strong but, did that. Ray went to uh, rescue four. Ray Strong from one eleven. He went to rescue four. Went back to one eleven, and then he ended up getting promoted to lieutenant and, and working there. Uh, 
in it's rescue not, it's not unheard of, guys. No, leaving. Yeah, yeah, no, no. To the rescue and saying, you know what? This isn't what I what I it's not, don't, don't, you don't want to do it, right? It's hey, a lot, it's, of, it's a lot like, of work. Uh, it's like golf. You get a mulligan, right? You get a do over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what a guy said forever back where you came from. They say, yeah, you want to rescue, right? And <laughs> who, who, wait, can you imagine? Water. Can you imagine <laughs> leaving a place twice? Not once, but twice. Holy That's shit. tough. Yeah. Who, uh, who was some of the guys there, Chief? That you uh, that stick out to you when you first got there? We're in rescue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? What a, what a cast of characters. There were some guys there that should have been retired. They should have been home. There were there were some older guys there. There were some 55, 58, 60 year old men in really? the rescue company. Dick Hannon, who retired and lived about a year. Dick Hannon was a great guy. Sixty something years old. He had a little goatee. I never saw him in uniform. He always had a beer in one of his one of his pockets. Always did a job. He wasn't a drunk or nothing like that. He always he was carrying a sword of the roof. He was 60 years old. Wow, you know, I see 40 great. year old guys complaining about the sword, you know? And uh, then we had guys that like were in a rescue. I wasn't sure why. They didn't want to do they didn't want to go anywhere. Jesus Christ, what are we doing now? Where are we going now? You know, and but I met a bunch of good I mean John Norman was there and Nick Giordano and Jay Jonas and Jerry Murtha, guys from all over the job. Yeah, we got a five. picture there, Petey. Of uh, uh the rescue rescue three. Three. <clears throat> well, I got a Great few guy. over here. Pete uh, Lund, Marty McTeague. Yeah, right. You know, you know, let's do this one here with Pete Lund. Maybe you could talk to, talk a little bit about Pete. I, I know that uh, some of the guys were wondering if you had worked with him, so on and so forth. That's Jay Jonas. Pete, there, Lund, right? Pete Lund was one of the one of the best firemen. You know, he, he was a great boss. I never knew him as a fireman. He was a boss when I got there. He was a fireman in Rescue Two. And a boss in three. Eventually, he went back to two as a lieutenant. He went back to two, right? Yeah. He retired out of rescue two. He got killed in the volleys. He died in a job in the volleys <laughs> after he retired. He died of a heart attack at the scene of a fire. But uh, he was great. Pete was always into it. We'd be, we'd be heading down to Harlem, you know, three, four minutes before the game of the ten seventy five. He'd be right. listening to the radio. Take it I in. I picked up some of his bad habits, and I did that when I was a lieutenant <laughs> in the squad years later. But uh, Pete was great. He was great. He loved the he loved the fire, man. He and so did everybody else. There's a good group of young guys right there. Oh yeah, Hugo Jerry Harold. Martha. Hugo right. Harold, great, great guy, great guy. Yeah, is that the guy in the other picture? You oh him, right? Yeah, right yeah. There. And just Hugo Harold. Everyone knows man, you, a plane could crash. A plane could crash in front of you. You go be like, take one more drag on a cigarette. I think <laughs> we're gonna do it. He was just a, probably the coolest dude I ever met. And really? I don't mean dude. I mean coolest fireman. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Cool as a cucumber. I Look just want to give oh, a man. quick shout out to our boy Joe, Joe Sperber for providing some of the photos for tonight. That was great. Yeah, I remember him. I remember him being in a rescue. He would come and ride with us, or he'd be at boxes when we got there. He took great shots. Yeah, he, he does great work, and uh, he, he heard you were coming on, and he, he immediately texted us. So uh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And he, yeah, and that he, one picture that you have that I don't have, I definitely want it, that, that one shot. But we'll talk I'll about it. That yeah. picture of him pulling the, pulling the roof. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that one right there. Yeah, that's awesome. proof that I actually did do some work in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Nice, dude. Any jobs there in three that you know stand out in your mind that you could tell these guys? Any good fire stories? I mean, I know there's you know, a lot. Try to recount. There's probably too many to count, right? Well, yeah, it is. It's tough to pick but up. It, you know what? It was just good. It was a steady, a steady diet of of decent work and we always got out early get down to harlem pretty fast over to the bronx you know some guys hated the rescue and you get some shit great yeah. great 69 28 story right now 69 and 28 is a great house i mean they wanted to see the rescue with a fire like like they wanted to you know catch a cold and you know they, they, they didn't want it to be there you know and that was just the way it was i was just a a, a cog in the wheel there but uh marty mcteague brought in the first rabbit tool the first rabbit tool. Nobody in the job had a rabbit tool. He brings it in one day in his leather bag. He says, hey, a friend of mine who's a chief down in Delaware developed this new tool. He put it together. This is like a prototype. He gave it to me to try out here in the Bronx. You know, so he opens it up, and he shows us it to me and Nikki and, and you know, Jerry Murtha, Jay Jonas. We're all looking at it saying, wow, look at this hydraulic thing. Holy shit. What a great idea for forcible entry, guys, you know? And that was great. the big one. That wasn't the rabbit, the bunny that was tool. The That's the big the one, one, yeah. The hose and the jaws. Carry that shit right? up six floors. That was put, a it big on the rig, <laughs> put it on the rig and bring it to a couple of big H's and we'll try it out. So we throw it on the rig. You know, two hours later, we get a run. 
I'm going to walk into the back of the rescue rig to get on. That thing comes flying off the rig. The bear comes flying off the rig. It's huge, misses too. My, misses my head. <laughs> right in. Tumbles onto the apparatus floor, and we drive out of corners. One of the old guys is in there with a cigarette. We don't need that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So the tool lays there. <laughs> I think it happened a couple more cool. times. So I did a couple more times, and eventually – Eventually, Marty, and Marty was such a gentleman, such a soft-speaking guy. You know, even at jobs, he'd pull up. Let's be free to battalion one six. What can we do for you? We'd be like, speak up, speak up. You know? <laughs> Eventually, we kept it on a rig. And you know what? Every fire truck in America has one of them now. Yeah, you right. Know? Yeah. Turned out to be a good – but the 28 story, the 28 truck story is eventually we got it there. Eventually, we brought it up to the top floor a couple of times. And I remember one time we pulled up to a box when it was still relatively new, but word was spreading that we had this, this new tool. Uh, 28 to rescue three. You got that the door flushing thing there? Bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> They'll deny it. They'll deny it. <laughs> the <door flushing> <laughs> it was McPartland. It was McPartland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. The door flushing thing. <laughs> Dude, that thing was heavy. That thing How was did heavy. you get the name of the rabbit tool? Uh, that's a good. Yeah, we should. I don't we know how they named it, but it was a good tool. tool. Maybe it opens the door quickly. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Ah, there you go. There you go. Hmm. You know, you're really yeah. a fart smell, you know that? I am. You know what I mean? I can do that. So, All right. So how many years do you wind up spending at Rescue 3? Not many. I think I was there for four years. Yeah, oh, That's enough I'm going, to that many, going to that many fires. It wasn't on, you know, <clears throat> out of the ordinary that you would go to, what, three, four, five fires in a tour, right? Yeah, a couple. You know, I mean, one yeah. night, the max, I think we went to like five or six one night, which was... Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember one night laying in a bunk room, all in one big bunk room, beep, boop, middle of the night. I'm saying to myself, oh, God, I hope that's for the engine. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we had been to like four flies already that night, but, uh, you know, time goes on. What What made you start to think about studying, Chief? Did you always have that oh, in your I head? I knew I was going to study when I was in probing school. I knew, yeah. I, knew I, I knew I was going to do. I even went to my reunion. I think we had a 20 or a 30-year reunion for probing class, and the guys were all busting my chops. Saying, they used to call me Chief in probing school. You know, oh, he's gonna be studying. He's gonna be studying. So, <laughs> listen, I'm not, I'm not bragging about it, but I'm glad I, but I'm glad I did at the last yeah. day. Of yeah, you know? yeah, oh, yeah. Who yeah. Uh, did you have? To, did you end up keeping the same study group over the years? <laughs> Absolutely, Ralph Fago, Jay Jonas, uh, Kevin Lochran, myself, Billy, uh, Billy Moore. It was a great group, and we all, a couple guys made deputy, a couple guys made battalion yeah, chief. Yeah, that's great. It's great. Yeah. Now we common, know uh, we want to get thing. we get Jay Jonas on. We got the little somebody to give him a little push. You know what I'm saying, Roofy? Oh, uh, Jay's a great guy. He's gonna great do guy. It. Yeah, I think he's going to do it. Yeah, he's just got to get out first. <clears throat> yep. All right, so you get promoted and you go to ladder 18, Fort Pitt, which is not too far from uh, 11 Truck where you work. Yeah, yeah. Do to 11 Truck. Yeah, which was great. I knew the neighborhood. I knew all the guys there. I was the Johnny on the rig every day yeah. until I left there. <laughs> <laughs> Red had 18, 20, 25, and 30 years, and I had seven and a half or eight years. Oh, no oh, shit. shit. Really? Now, luckily for me, I knew all these guys. You right, know? right, right, right. And because right. they were all these senior guys in the truck down the block. Right. So they knew me. They were all very respectful, which was nice. I mean, I took the test. Everybody in the job knows you take a test, you get promoted, you know. But uh, Ray Skinner and the rest of them, bunch of great guys. <laughs> great guys. Yep. Did you? Uh, I was only did there you... for a short time. I was going to say, uh, did you bounce before that, Chief, at all? Just quick. Did again? You, did you bounce at all before that? How long yeah, did you bounce? Yeah, I bounced a little bit. I, well, here's when I really did my bounce. And I bounced in the first division and got 18 Trump, uh, maybe six months or something. And then and then uh, I got a phone call one day, Tony Lindbergh. He was he was like the administrative law. They were creating SOC. There was no SOC back then. 13th, uh, Rescue 13th 3 was in the 13th time. What was it? Called, like, called Six David or something like that? Was the... Uh, yeah, Instead that was of, like the boss of the rescue services or something. But the but the rescues then were just in the battalion where they were. I worked all the time in forty five truck, and they right, worked all right, the time right. in the they rescue. Would work. Right. So they came up with the idea. I don't know who did it, but they 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 started the uh, SOC, which was all the rescues and uh, and and a squad and some other shit, whatever the other stuff was. And uh, so they said, "We're starting a new command. You want to be part of it?" I mean, not as an officer, you know, as a covering officer. And I thought about it. I said, "You know what? I'm I'm going to go for it." So I left my spot. I actually left 18 truck after being there for like a year or 18 months or something. And I bounced around in, in, in sock, which was great. I was working in a rescue. Every time I went to work, I, I was citywide, of course, working all over the place. But it was great. I got some good experience. And I was already in a rescue, so I was familiar with the tools and the, and the rigmarole, you know. And you probably right. knew a lot of the guys already. 
Well, I knew the guys in three, some of the guys in one from going to jobs and stuff down there. I don't know anybody out in the other rescues. I mean, mm -hmm. Rescue 5 was about 85 miles from my house, right? <laughs> oh, shit. I remember doing a vacation there, driving 85 miles each way to work. And the guy that was driving me lived on Staten Island. And he said, so where do you live, there, Lou? I said, oh, I'm up in Orange County, about 85 miles. He said, holy shit. He said, I don't, I don't commute 85 miles in a whole year coming to work. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm think gonna, he walked to work. I think he was like his his to traffic work. is hitting the one light, you know, coming around the corner, for God's sakes. But, uh, but, but it worked out great. I did the whole rescue thing. And I was a, still a bop. I still had seven and a half, eight years on the I was going to say, how did the guys treat you, you know, coming in as an officer in a rescue with seven years on the job? Luckily, I was from a rescue. It's not like I was a covering guy from, you know, three engine or two engine or right, one right, engine. Right, or right. I'm not knocking those companies. Don't get me wrong. But uh, it worked out good. And I ended up, I thought I had a good spot. They, they created squad enhanced engine 41. And I ended up on a spot there with John Keenan and, uh, and uh, oh gosh, what, what's his name? He's, he's got a beard now and a, and a great ponytail. Uh, Jack Kleehaus was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jack was there and I was there and somebody else. And uh, anyway, Apparently, Jack Lee has finally turned, finally talked Patty Brown into coming up to Squad 41. So, obviously, they had three lieutenants there already. They had to make an opening. So, somebody had to leave. Hello. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not forget uh, Nastro. Frank Nastro was the chief of SOC at the time. And uh, they just swapped us. Patty Brown was UFO in Squad 1. I was UFO in Squad 41. They swapped us. They sent me to Brooklyn, even oh. farther than 85 miles. And uh, and you know what? It turned out to be one of the best things that ever happened to me. And I stayed there. I took the spot and I stayed there till I got promoted. Yeah. Wow! But that's a. I mean, we talked to like who was there? Oh, we, there. we talked to right. Freddie Lafamina. We talked to Freddy other. Lafamina was one of my firemen, and Joe Downey, and uh, oh god, a, ho a whole crew of great, great guys. Talk about a great crew. A couple, <laughs> bunch of guys, bunch of guys lost on 9/11. Between there, you know, Kevin Kevin O'Rourke left squad and went to rescue two. He he died there on 9/11 and. God, what a, what a Billy McGinn, one of my dearest friends. I, I'll tell you a short Billy story. It, it kills me to tell it. <clears throat> Billy McGinn came to 11 truck when I was a fireman there. And I had the whole, I had the whole three and a half, four years on a job when I was in 11 truck. And he had no years because he was the probie. And he walks in the door and he's a college graduate. Strike two. <laughs> I, called him college boy. I called him college boy. What's your name, Billy? Oh, your, na your name is college boy. So I walk into the kitchen in the morning with his little Irish cab driver's hat on and his bag of rolls and he he put the bag down and he'd sit down i said what are you doing he said i'm gonna I'm have a coffee and a roll no you're not go go change and go check the rig college boy you know so i was all over him like boy. you know what <laughs> we ended up becoming very good friends and and i ended up leaving 11 going to going to rescue three he ended up i got promoted i ended up in, in the squad one and i took him over to squad one from from 11 truck and I got promoted to squad one, made captain at 48, and he, and he got promoted lieutenant, and he was one of my lieutenants. Is that right? Yeah. That happens a lot, though. That does happen a lot. You do acquire. And, and then uh, I left 48 and became a chief in a 1 8, and he left 48 when they made the new squads. Him and Andy he went Fred, to 18. Squad <clears throat> yep. 18, and they both yeah. died together. Yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, he gave me my front piece on my helmet, which is right over here. My gold front piece, Billy McGinn gave me when I got really? promoted. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I liked him. Great, great guy. Uh, before we get, I, I had a question too. We kind of uh, circumvented this question. How did you get the name Sammy? Good, 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 good question. So, so I show up at eleven truck, and I introduce myself to a couple of guys. Turns out there was like nine guys named John in this fire. <laughs> <laughs> so after the third one, everybody else got some other kind of a name. I don't know who came up with Sammy, but that was my name, and I was there for four years. My girlfriend, <laughs> my wife was calling me Sammy. <laughs> if, if somebody says Sammy right now, I still turn. <laughs> it was great. Uh, I didn't know that. Stalking, 11 truck. It was great. It was great. So guys who know you a long time, do they still call you Sammy? No. Yeah. 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 That's funny. All right, so uh, you're in Squad One now. They don't. They only have first two boxes, and everything else is 1075s, right? First new engine in the neighborhood, yeah. and 1075. How do you, how you go wrong with it? It's beautiful. No hydrants, no oh. bi. <laughs> oh, bi. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Two, I think it was 220, 220, 220 engine. We checked the hydrant front of quarters. We <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> be great if you were drinking coffee. For, hey, make sure that hydrate's working good. All right, <laughs> I never felt bad about right that. I never felt bad. <laughs> It was a great spot. It was worth every mile. I drove past a million great places. Oh, you had to be going to in Orange County. Yeah, to Brooklyn. Down, you had yeah, to be yeah. going to a ton of work there, though, right? I mean, and it was only work. And I did a couple of twenty fours where we didn't turn a wheel, which means either did anybody else in ten battalions, right? You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. yeah. How and there was no EMS back then, so it was work so or nothing. Up the <laughs> and I would hear, I'd hear, you know, Brooklyn calling a five seven. Yeah, you get a lot of calls. Looks like you're going to work. I jump up, or whatever battalion it was. I jump up and slide the pole. Let's go. We're going out. Bing, 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 bing. Everybody who slide the pole, we'd be halfway to the box on the game of 1075. Yeah, Maybe no doubt. On the, on the door, you know? Yeah, so, no doubt. It was good. How it was, was good. I mean, you know what that neighborhood is now, right? I mean, the building's there and what they're worth and all that stuff. How was it? It was then? beautiful. It was Guys, still nice. Across the street for a beer. You could park your cars outside. I mean, 10 blocks away was the jungle. But right in the neighborhood was was very nice. Now they're multi million dollar. Back then they were just million dollar brownstones. Now they're multi million oh dollar. Yeah. yeah, so it was it was still nice right there then, huh? Absolutely, President Street and all that beautiful, beautiful. I mean, those buildings are incredible. They really are incredible there. It was a beautiful place. Yep. Now I remember when I first got there. Um, I don't know how long I was there. Maybe six months. I came home one night. I told my wife. I said that. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't think I'm going to stay out in that squad out in Brooklyn. She said, I was too far. Huh? I said, no, no, the trip, it's not, it's, it's, it's not too far. No, I mean, it's far, but it, that's not the reason. She said, what is it? I said, these guys drive so fast. I'm upstairs hoping we don't get any runs. <laughs> I said, they scared the shit out of me on every run. We're going under the L. The pillars are passing me. So fast, I can't even get another time. Who was your self in then? <laughs> oh, my God. It was a couple of them. It was a couple of different guys. You know, uh, Drive fast, take chances. I'll, th I'll, th I'll, th I'll think about a minute. A, c a couple of them died on 9/11 too. Uh, uh, <clears throat> one guy, I got a picture of him hanging in my hanging in my office here. Me and him sitting somewhere. I forget where we were sitting together, and him looking at the uh, him looking at the camera, and smiling. But uh, these guys drove so fast that now we we had the, uh, the speedometer on the dashboard in front of the officer. I, I don't know too many fire departments had that. I put my foot on top of that so I don't have to test the foot. It would get pinned. It would be at 60, right? I mean, it only I went up to 60. I see how fast they were going. <laughs> and you were in the crash position you. already. You know, I, I just looked out the side window for the other three years. That's all. I didn't look out the windshield, you know. So you're there for four years total? I know the feeling. You know, man. I think so. I never kept really good track of, of my dates and times and promotion years and stuff like yeah. that. But it was about uh, that, yeah. That's a lot of work, though, four years over there. Yeah, oh, first two boxes, it was and, and it was an old-fashioned single bay firehouse with the wooden stair, like in your grandma's house. You know, you walk up the stairway, yeah. the creek yeah, stairs. Yeah, yeah. And I worked with John Fox. John Fox made battalion chief. He just passed away a couple of years ago. John, John was a piece of work, man. He and I, I think we might have said like twenty-five words to each other total the whole time I knew him. John Fox is not a real talkative guy, not a hateful guy or or anything. But like, I'd come in and relieve him. How you doing? Good. That, that word number one, good. He'd push himself away from the desk. He'd hop up, walk across, swing his locker open. Before you know it, he'd have his jacket on. By boom, the door would close. He'd be gone. Well, that was our change of information for like two years. We did get along just fine, but we didn't, you know, eventually we eventually we, we had a little more conversation on that. Eddie Staines was the captain. And, of course, Sonny Cataldo was one of the original lieutenants when they when he opened up squad one in 77, when they reopened him in 77, he mm -hmm. was a great guy. Too. Yeah. Oh Good man, sport. that would have been a great place. I would have loved to have worked there, man. That would have been awesome. All right. So you finally, you, you study again, you get promoted and you go to engine 48, another great place. How does that happen? Did you bounce as a captain at all? Or how'd you get that? I spot? bounced up in the Bronx for about uh, a month. I think I bounced for about a month up in the Bronx. What happened was 48 was open. Uh, they were doing about 6,000 runs a year. The other couple of captains that were up there, uh, Bory, Bory got 81 engine. I'm trying to remember his first name. Uh, great guy, older guy, maybe 10 years older than me. And Jimmy Lucas, who ended up getting 51 truck down. Both of them were senior to me, promoted at least a year ahead of me, maybe more. And mm -hmm. I, I, I checked with both of them. You, either you guys interested? I think there was three captains maybe covering in the seventh division at the time. But Bory said, no, I did my 8,000 runs back in the 70s. I'm good. I'm not going to 6,000 runs. <laughs> and I said, fine. And he went to 81 engine. He was a great guy. And Jimmy Lucas said the same thing. Now, as a matter of fact, Jimmy Lucas was a lieutenant 
the 17 engine when I was lieutenant in 18 truck. And we ran into each other again up in the 7th division. He said, nope, you can have 48. And he went up to 80. <clears throat> so I got 48 UFO with, I don't know, six months in rank. Nobody else even put in for it on the order. I was the only guy put in for the spot. And I got it. It was a great place. It's got to be one of the toughest kitchens in the job. You don't go in there and, well, whatever. You know, if, 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 if you're vulnerable, <laughs> if you're vulnerable they're going to get you. No, yeah. get you. Really? If you're a gazelle bleeding from the back hind quarter, <laughs> <laughs> you're not making it out of there, that's for sure. Oh, man, I'll tell you. All sorts of rules, all sorts of ways things are done. No TV in the kitchen, the whole nine yards. Really? That was a tough yeah. place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> But, Bob uh, Borey. Anyway, Bob Borey spot. was the name, Chief. Great spot. I, I made some good friends there, too. Yeah. Garrett, Garrett Lingrid in the chat said it was Bob Bob Borey, right? Bob yeah. Borey. That's it. What a gentleman. Very nice guy. <clears throat> wow. That's a, a tough kitchen there. So uh, you catch a lot of work there for the runs, for the 6,000 runs? 48 was a great place. Plenty of work. 56 truck. Excellent truck. I used to call them the dopes in the truck. I mean, they, they weren't really dopes, but, you know, you, you got to have something. You know, yeah, the, yeah. the truck puts a garbage can fire out. They're heroes. They're in front of the Daily News. <laughs> the engine puts six all hand flies out. Nobody even knows what they have. You know? <laughs> so I had to try and keep my thumb down on them a little bit. But it was a great house. Another reason nobody else – what's another reason nobody else put in for 48 engine? Everybody know? Hmm. I know, the deputy I know in court. Ah, who, who. Nobody wants to work with the deputy. Nobody yeah. wants to work with the deputy. Turned out to be one of the best things about it. Nobody, he, Number one, the deputies didn't mess with their own place. I was going to say, if you're cooking for the deputy and cleaning for the deputy, I mean, I, you know I think what? that's a... Listen, you want to come to work and, and drink till you shit your pants? That's obviously not the place to go. Right. But short of that, <laughs> but short of that <laughs> they treated us very well. Allegedly. They treated us very yeah. well. Really um, did. And I made speaking, some good, I made speaking, some good connections there. Not friends. I didn't become friends with any of the deputies, but I got to know a couple of them pretty well. Yeah, that's, good I, that's how I ended up back in the 18th Battalion when I got promoted to battalion chief. Uh -huh. I in the 18th Battalion, and then I became a chief in the same battalion that I was a captain in. So, in the end, it paid off. Chief, yeah, the, the the chat is lit up, going crazy, and they're asking if you're the guy who said tell them to put the fire out, the effing fire out. In that video, I don't recall it's, it sounds that. like yeah. you. Yeah, bomb on the radio. You know what? It did sound like you. It did, did sound it? like. You. I don't know Anything because that's our show opener, and that's. Do you have that little? Do you have that little clip, Pete? Do you have? Well, that? I had. I mean, I could play the show open again. It's in no, the, in just a little. You gotta get the little. I, clip. I'll, I'll, I'll download. It the does clip. sound like him. It did sound like him. I wasn't too sure if it was. I always kind of think who that is, but it did sound like him. But I think that was somebody right. in Manhattan. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. In you know what? Yeah, we talk about flyers in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I don't want to go to. <laughs> yeah. sub cell is down. Those you don't want to go to. <laughs> right. It is pretty simple. You know, it is pretty simple. Put the flyer out, right? I mean, some guys make it complicated, but the... yeah, you know, sometimes Most ninety eight percent of the time, it put goes the wet out. stuff on the red stuff. Everything will be all right, right? <laughs> you always heard the story. Try putting it out with that axe. You know? Did you see? Did you see that job? Yeah. Did you see that job today, Chief? That they had with the explosion. What's that? You see the explosion they had today, the 1060 they in the had? Bronx? I heard about that. I was talking to a friend of mine, Pete Castellano. He's in 27 truck, and he was hanging over today, and I was talking to him on the phone. He said, yeah, the guys are out now at a big job explosion with a couple of buildings going. I, yeah, I saw it on the news. I like watching flyers on the news now. They're much better. <laughs> it's a lot better. In my, in my pajamas. I love it. <laughs> and your slippers. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that looks oh, fine. Shit. <laughs> Yeah. I think there was that originally came in as a two and two as well, just for an owner guess. I think. Did you I see mean, the I video? Was jobs when I was UFO and seventeen engine, we went out on ourselves, uh, by ourselves, ERS no contact, and I gave a ten seventy five and did the primary search. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my dad worked in seventeen engine. Maybe you worked was with he? him. Yep. Back in the, uh, he got I don't know. He was in the sixties. He probably missed you. He um he he left before. What year were you in uh, in eleven truck? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember years. Early now. 80s, Kev. Early 80s, he was there. Yeah, 80, uh, he went I, 80, and he went, I left there in 84. I think my dad was gone before that. Yeah. yeah. But he was in 17 great, Engine. Great house, 17 Engine. Big history. And then they closed them. That, I got the that, building, that building's gone. That whole building's gone. They took it, it down. It was there for years, though. It was there a long time. Vacant. Well, well when I was there, it was the new building connected to the precinct. 17 and 18, right? They closed 17 Engine. 18 Truck was the 4th Battalion by themselves for years. Right. Then they took 15 engine off of uh, off of their little 
very historic firehouse. Yes. They moved them over to where 17 was, and they closed, and they there's still 15 engine, but they're in right. with 18 truck now. Right. Yeah. But that whole building where 17 was is actually, they tore it down. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of the old buildings in downtown Manhattan, they did. A five truck, a 24 engine. A lot of the yeah. newer places, you know, they knocked the old, beautiful old houses down. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's move on from 48. You can become a now. This is a big chunk of your career. You're a battalion chief for 17 years, right? You get promoted and you go to battalion 18. We, we you told us how you got there. You made a little connection. Oh, I worked in the sixth division first. I covered down in the sixth division. Okay. Anybody work in the sixth division? Sixth division is a totally different animal than the seventh division. Two different places. Cross Bronx separates them, right? And uh, I mean, they're both great places. They go both. But anyway, I went to the sixth division and and had a wonderful time down there bouncing around. And then when the seventh, uh, you know, when 18 opened up, I put it for it and didn't get it. Didn't get it the first time I put it for it. Somebody else got it ahead of me. Uh, Ruiz, Ruiz, Gary Ruiz, great guy, 18th Battalion. And then I put it for the next time and I got it. And uh, and that was that. I settled in and, and half the job passed me by in 17 years. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> when I retired, the guy that was the deputy, he, was was a lieutenant in 45 engine when I first got to the 18th battalion. No and my shit. last night in the 18th battalion, he was my boss. Really? That's yeah. sick. Yeah, but you know what? You were you were really I mean I remember you being there. You were like a staple. You know what I mean? In the end, you know, guys like that uh you know that guy, you know, chiefs or bosses that are there for a long time. It's it, it's it's a good feel. In that you know? particular uh, place people do stay a long time. I was the captain of 48. Joe Principio at the same time was the captain of 58 truck. I remember going over there working overtime on the engine or whatever. So I made chief, was chief for 17 years. I'm going to tie it 10 years, and I'm going next week to Joe Principio's last night in 58 truck. Wow, that's awesome. 25 years. And the captain of, that just left 45 engine was there for 18 years. Yeah, it's So good. that's a place that guys stay for a long time, generally. Yeah. It was uh, I just sort of stalled out. What a great place to stall in, the 18th Battalion. Nah, you know? listen, yeah, listen, the bottom line is, got, again – until you have a boss who's there for that amount of time, right? If you had a boss that's constantly, if you had, a, if you're in a firehouse that constantly flips, it loses something. You know what I mean? I mean, you you, you want to have somebody uh, who you know and you could trust, and you know all that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I just felt it was better if you had some longevity in some places. It's, yeah. it's always good. You know what I mean? As opposed to well, tell us, <laughs> tell us what you told us in the pre-show about being a deputy chief. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and I have to preempt this with. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> oh, boy. you didn't preempt it before. Oh, boy. Some of my best friends were deputies, and I got I, and I got all the all the respect in the world for deputies. It's a tough job, but I had no interest in it at all. I want to go out with the boys. I want to go out on the first box with the company. Yeah, but you know, tell us I'm what you friends. told us. You'd rather do so what? Said, tell me, hey, chief, why don't you study for deputy? Why aren't you taking a deputy's test? I said I'd rather eat a bowl of dog shit than be a deputy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> And I have no ill no ill feelings to a deputy. One of my best friends, Jay Jonas, is division commander of the seventh division. And you know, he, he's a serious dude and he's a he's a great deputy. And I met listen, having worked in the in 48 engine, I met a lot of good deputies there. A lot of good senior guys that just I'll tell you there's nothing like working a job, even as a battalion chief. No one is a good sharp deputy out on a sidewalk, you know. Oh, That's no nice. doubt about it. Hmm. And the same thing, like when you show up as the chief, to, to look at senior guys or senior officers or officers that have been in a place in your battalion for a long time. Again, it works for you, too, as opposed to guys flipping through there all the time. You show up to a job. you got three engines in front of you, and you know every boss for five or ten yeah. years. How easy yeah. is that for you? You know what I mean? I, mean, I, I was there so long in, this, in, in the 18th Battalion. I worked with 13 other battalion chiefs. Wow. In the time Holy that shit. I was there, the guys that came and went yeah, and came yeah, and went yeah. and came and went, you know, so whatever. It worked out good. I, like I had it, a nice though. office there and a nice bunk room, you know, I was comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better than you. All right. I want to talk about your books a little bit, Chief, if that's all right. So, um, and maybe you could tell us where you were. In uh, 2004, it was your first book. It was First In, Last Out. And uh, it's basically. Yeah, Petey. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 look at Petey. He got me. He got me 2004, ah. <clears throat> and uh, basically it says, what does it take to lead people into a burning building? How do the leaders of the New York City Fire Department develop such much loyalty, trust, and grace under pressure that the subordinates will risk every risk their very lives for them? Uh, and you also, again. That's a funny story because 
what I, what I did was I got a call from uh, from somebody. I'm trying to remember Christy Christy Fletcher, and she's a uh, uh, she's like a like an agent for people that are writers, right? Mm -hmm. she'll, get, she'll get your book published. If you wrote a book, you could go to her and she knows all the publishers and she'll get the book. She'll get a good price for it. But she called me and said, would you be interested in writing a book about leadership? I said, where'd you get my name from? <laughs> she said, oh, actually, Chief Vinny Dunn, we called him first. And he said, nah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, my God. I call this guy Salka. So they said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, sure. Yeah, and yeah, I know he's been for years now. The but list. Right now, right now, stopping seconds. I'll take the well, stopping seconds. And, uh, <laughs> it worked out great. I, I, I never really planned on writing a book until they called me up. And then they, they got a guy that came and helped me and sat down and talked about what they were looking for, what kind of a format. <clears> and uh, this book was in the airports and the regular bookstores compared no, to couple other books i wrote are just sort of like fire books fire engineering sells them and only firemen buy them you know but uh, i think i i think it's printed in uh in uh oh two different languages i think japanese and korean or something like that i got i got two copies i got one right here and the, the, it goes in the back printed in another language you know but uh yeah that was my first book it's still my most popular book as well yeah how did uh dennis smith get to become part of it. I know he's part of that book somehow. So I right? write for Firehouse Magazine. I write the back page of Firehouse Magazine every month. So I know Dennis Smith from there. And what, when either word spread or they might have contacted him and, and they asked me, would you mind if Dennis Smith writes the uh, writes the forward for your book? I said, sure, I know Dennis. So we became closer after that. So he wrote the forward. And he's a very recognizable, much more famous writer than, than right. I would be. So that, that, was, that was helpful for me. Yeah, I no doubt. Uh, so, uh, did, uh, what was involved in writing the book? I mean, did you have to sit down and how long did it take you? Like, did you have oh, to write it notes? Took months. And, and yeah. the guy that was helping me came to the firehouse a few times and, and actually visited me here in my home one time. So we did a lot of work together. You know, he right. was a professional writer. His name is on the book. You know, he's like my co-writer on that book, you know? Um, and, uh, it just came out great. And I, I told a lot of my funny stories and not so funny stories in there. And, and I, and, and, and there it is. That, that's a funny picture. That picture was taken at the Washington, D.C. Fire Academy. We were down there for a conference, and we just happened to take that picture, and I loved it for the cover, so they, so they used that, that, that photograph. Nice. Um, I, I tell a great story in there. Barrett Neville. Barry Neville, he's the, he's the co-writer. He was, he was a very, very big help uh, for my first book. But I tell a great story about the 18th Battalion. There's a, a guy named Jack, whose last name will remain uh, a secret. Uh, because he's a useless piece of shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he's, so he's I've never heard such language. Day. I'm leaving. And, well, here's how the story starts. I come into work one night. I get dressed. Same routine. I'm a man of routine. I like to do routine. You know, I come in. I park in front of the firehouse because eventually the guy who's working, we park behind the chief's car, pull the chief's car out. The guy goes home. I back in. Car goes back in. I park in front of the firehouse, come in, say hello to the house watch when I walk upstairs. I never went to the kitchen. I always went upstairs, shower, change, get dressed. Now I'm ready to go. I come back down. Now I go and bullshit in the kitchen and have a cup of coffee. I walk in. Guys are all looking at me smiling and, you know, <clears throat> something's up. Something's up. He said, what's up? Oh, you don't know? I said, no, I don't know. What's up? So they tell me the story. Yeah, yesterday or last night. I can't remember when it was. Dennis Moynihan, God rest his soul. He died. He died about a year and a half ago of a brain tumor. Very unexpectedly. He was a commander for a long time when I was a young chief there. And uh, Dennis Moynihan was working. What a gentleman. And uh, asshole was driving him. And the end of the shift is coming. And Cal Cuddy calls up. He's the incoming aide. Calls up and talks to the chief. Hey, chief, I'm running late. My wife's car broke down. I had to fix it. I'll be in, but I'm not going to make 6 o'clock. Take your time. Take your time. We're here. We'll see you when you get here. And he didn't mention it to Jack. <laughs> Jack being a useless, selfish son of a whore. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> he leaves at five to six. He just leaves. He oh, just leaves. joy. And a run comes in at four to six. And the chief's dropping himself. <laughs> 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 the engine goes. So Jack. Somebody said, Jack, you're driving? Oh, he's gone. He left about 15 minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> One of the guys that was going home jumped in oh, and dropped shit. the clock. What a he's all upset. Guy. No, I wasn't around for this, but I came in like two tours later. Now they're telling me about it. I said, really? Jack did this to him? They said, yeah. I said, all right, we'll fix that. I'm on the phone talking to my buddy Bladdis, Richie Bladdis. I think he's acting chief operations right now. Uh -huh. uh, 
we were we were, we were uh, battalion chiefs at the same time. He was up in a one five. I'm talking to him about it. He said, "Oh, you got to get rid of him." I said, "Yeah, I want to dump this piece of shit." He was a truck guy on a detail to the battalion. He wasn't assigned, uh -huh. so that's what I did. I, I revoked his I revoked his detail, filled all the paperwork out, got it all done. Then I called Dennis at home. Hey, Dennis, this is John Falco. What what the hell happened with you? You got left there. He, yeah, Jack left. Can you imagine that? We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do something. Maybe we maybe we should send him back to the truck for a couple of tours. I said, Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> totally good idea. Yeah, yeah. And I called him up that night. Hey Jack. Hey Chiefy, what's up? I said, Hey Jack, you're fired. You don't work here anymore. Back to your truck. At least tomorrow morning, don't come in here. Like, I, awesome. I tell that story in a book without using his name, of course, you know. Oh man. <laughs> I never so, fired anybody. It's the closest I got to fired someone. So, 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 Chief, just, just a quick thing. Since you brought up, I had written, wrote it down. I had mentioned it to you in the pre-show. So I remember, you know, uh, when you were trying as the chief maybe to go to the rescue battalion and the guys, there was that that uh, video. <clears throat> you mentioned you mentioned Chief Blattis. And there was the video. I don't remember what movie it was from, but it's the Russian. Uh, and the the uh, German, Hitler. yeah, yeah, it's Hitler. Yeah, but you could put, you know, the guys were doing it on a lot of stuff, and it was really funny. And they did it with you, and it was about, you know, Blad, Chief Blad is getting the spot from it, the rest of the It was my last night on the job. It was my, I was retiring. It was my little. Oh, is that right? Life. They did it. Oh my god! And it was three hundred guys in the firehouse on the apparatus floor. You know, with tables out and everything else. It was great. My daughter was there, and all. Uh, it was just it. Great. And all of a sudden, they're like, Chief, hold on a second. Watch, and they already had the big monitor up there, and all of a sudden this thing comes on, and it's got the uh, it's got the what's called monitor. Right? Subtitles. You know, they're, talking, they're talking in a German, but but you can, and it's like you see all these all these Nazi you know generals they're all sweating, they're all sweating, and and and, and, and Hitler's yelling yeah, by it. He's talking, and and now they put all the words at the bottom saying, but. Uh, but Chief Salka, you didn't get the rescue battalion. <laughs> and he's like this, like he's grabbing his glasses. And his eyes are bulging and he's screaming. And they're all, they don't know what, and he throws them all out of the office and he starts oh, pulling his camera. The place do, we have, do we have that somewhere? No, we don't. We, I ah, tried to come it. on. I you tried to get so it was so freaking funny. That was one of the funniest things that I went, ever That went throughout, that went, that went out throughout the job. Because I remember seeing that, you know, when, they, when they Hitler. They that to you too? Yeah, they did it to me too. But that's yeah. the same. The guys were doing it. That, but they, I, they I retired, to grab the glasses. I retired in uh, August. I think it was August. And I remember on September 11th, I was at, you know, the 18th Battalion runs that Fireman's Monument September 11th ceremony. Those are my men that run that. Not the officers. The firemen have been running that for 20 years now. I remember being there. And uh, Chief of Training, Tom uh, uh, he's, he's Galvin. Tommy Galvin shows up. Mm -hmm. At 9-11, at the ceremony, comes up to me and says, I saw your video. <laughs> <laughs> he started at headquarters, all the staff chiefs. They played at one of the staff chiefs' meetings. Oh, my God. Petey, it was, uh, there's another, there was another picture in there that we wanted to show uh, with one of our future guests coming on with the chief. Yeah. This there one. he is. Oh, man. who's that guy? Just, and just... another thing here, Clint. This is what's going to happen here. Clint, here's another thing. <laughs> Tim Platt, 88 and another thing, one. Vonnegut. You know, <laughs> I've had the truck officers that didn't know what they were doing, but you, there's no rule for engine officers that don't know what they're doing. And, and I'm not blowing smoke up his ass. He is a great, great engine officer. I used to love going to jobs with him. He had his shit in order all the time. And, you know, I was a chief for a long time, and I met a lot of great officers. And I met I met some solidly good officers, and I met a couple of shitbirds that shouldn't have even been in the front seat. You know, and, and anybody who's a chief for any amount of time will be will tell you the same thing, you know, and, and it wasn't him, man. I'll tell you what, I love going to job with him. He was, here's a good story. So I'm, I'm acting deputy one night in the seventh, which I hated doing, but when you're the senior uh, battalion chief, you get it. Excuse right? me for a minute, boys. Go so ahead. I'm going up to the 15th battalion. Uh, they get a job at 1075 up in a one five. I'm heading up there. And that was, uh, I'm trying to remember who was the, who was the chief up there. Great guy. And, and 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 on the way up there, they transmit a second alarm for throw frames, fire and exposure to or whatever. So I get up there now and I'm talking to him and uh, Neil Neil. Uh, no, I can't remember. Anyway, so I'm up there talking to him. They already transmit a second alarm, and all of a sudden I hear uh, rescue three to division seven urgent. Go ahead. We're on a top floor exposure two. We get fire up here. We need a line right away. Ten four. 
I turn around. Not a second law of companies. A couple are already in. And, and I'll, I'll make the numbers up because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But, like, <clears throat> the first engine's there. And it's, like, not happening. They're not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I looked right past them like they're not even there. The second engine was there. It was a pretty decent outfit, but the lieutenant was like wide-eyed. He didn't even put like the riding list with the pencil on it, like with a number. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's yeah. like this. Skip over him. Who's standing behind him? Clat. Uh. Boys from '88. I tell him, Tim, come here. He said, Chief, I'm there. I do. I said, get. Up here, <laughs> yeah. he walks through these guys and he's like, Apologize to him. I'm sorry, I know I'm dirty. <laughs> I said, Did you hear the rescue? He said, Yeah, uh, could you get up there with the fire up for me, please? You know, but so he went up and put it out. And you know, Chief, that goes back, back to what we talked about earlier. You know, Say when again? you work with that, goes back to what we talked about earlier you when you work with people him. for a long time, him. right? You could trust him, him. right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And hey, he was it. <laughs> Kumbaya time or a training fire. This was yeah, the real yeah, deal. Yeah, I had yeah. to get the job done. Right. And nobody said, hey, <laughs> you think any of the officers came up to me and said, Chief, what's up with this? I was first yeah. to alarm. Why didn't you pick me? No, I didn't hear it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He's in the chat. He said the best line of that uh, Hitler movie was, I was cutting Bronx Ruse when you were cutting Bronx Science. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was the Bladdits, right? That's when they say, no, he's like, no, the best line in that in that video was when I said he can't even put he can't even put a flyer out in a top hat. He can't even run a <laughs> Who is this Bladdis you speak of? I remember. No, I wasn't talking about Bladdis. I was talking about the division commander in the seventh division. Oh. Uh, the follow up scene, no, Richie's a friend of mine. The follow up scene in that video was oh, so I'm gonna have to stay in the seventh division. I'm not going to the rescue battalion. I have to stay in the seventh division and and deal with deal with them. Oh, and, and shit, that's out. freaking great! Yeah, yeah. Dude, that, I remember that. It was, it was so great freaking out. funny. Uh, we gotta get. A, I think we get a hold of that. And just put it up as its own thing, Griffey. Right? We're gonna put it as oh, its own. Not very long. It's pretty funny. But you know what? If you don't know me or Bladder, so what was going on? It probably doesn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Care. I don't care. We're putting it up they, anyway. They, they did that to me. We were trying to get. We were having trouble with the dispatches, and I was going through the. I had bo papers and boxes. You know, I was looking at all the boxes and the runs and all this shit. And they did that at the Christmas party with me, and it was the same thing. Like, uh, you're not getting the boxes back, and you know, oh. he's reaching for the, 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 you know, the, the the glasses like that. Oh my god, it was. Now oh, so we're gonna oh, play both of them. Like yeah, reaching for. Yeah, he's reaching for the glasses. You know, like he's he's like. I got a copy of it somewhere. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get both. I love it. I love All it, right, I love let's it. go to the second book, Chief. The Engine Company, uh, two thousand nine. This comes out. Uh, so it's uh, it says that this book, Chief, uh, Battalion Chief Salk, a nationally recognized speaker and author with years of service in several career and volunteer departments, looks at both similarities and differences in the engine company's operations practice by fire department throughout the United States. Is this by any chance where that uh, you know when we met you a couple of times, you were doing that. Uh, that lecture, you know, hit it hard from the yard versus interior attack. Did that right. develop from that or? No, no, hitting it hard from the yard is just some psychotic idea that somebody else came up with later on. W when I did my book, I mean, obviously I was the captain of a busy engine for a long time. The squad is in fact an engine, even though we did a lot of truck work at jobs, you know, and there was really no, I don't know. I don't want to say there wasn't a good book, but there really wasn't a good comprehensive book on engine operations. Everybody writes about trucks, <clears> about forcible entry, about cutting the roof about search, about rescue, about ropes, and all this other shit. Nobody writes about putting a fire out. So I ended up doing that book for that reason. And it came out, I thought it came out very good. At, at the back of the book, I did some scenarios. I put a picture and say, you're the first new engine here. You know, what size line would you stretch? What door would you would you use to go in? And, and the other thing I did inside the book is I talked about urban, like cities. I talked about suburban and even rural. You know, there's rural fire departments that have tankers and large diameter holes and stuff that guys on our job don't even don't even no, know what I they are. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. We don't have large diameter holes, you know. Right. So I wrote about all those different things, you know, so when it opened up the book, it was a more interest to a greater range of people rather than just guys, you know, in a Bronx or in urban fire departments, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, we talk about this a lot, like since doing this show, kind of opened our eyes a little bit about how the rest of the country goes to fires like first of all the dry the, the, the showing up with maybe a, a driver an officer and one guy in the back step and they may not have a hydrant for god knows how far so it's a totally different animal than what we're used to you know we're used to coming in there hydrant you know uh 50 guys, guys. yeah we don't even think about it, yeah, we don't we don't think about it. No. my son went to north charleston mm -hmm. south carolina he went down there and got on a job 
great little fire department. And, and most of the time it was a driver, an officer, and him in the back by himself. He was yeah. the, he was the single firefighter on the rig. Most of the time, once in a while, he'd have another guy back there, but but not very often. And that's very, very common nationally, right? Yeah. And, you know, when I had a job, they worked their nuts off. They got to stretch the yeah. line. They got to connect it. They got to pull it to the front door. They got to charge it. There's no doorman. There's no guy at the bottom. Right. No, no. I got, well, that's why we've said this, Chief. Like, again, I, I would never say this prior to doing the stuff that we're doing and, and what we talk about and guys that we talk to. But now I could understand if you showed up with three guys, one guy's pumping and it's out every window. I could understand maybe taking the nastiness out of it if you wanted to just try and knock it down a little bit. I can, I, You could sell me Absolutely. on it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not a I mean? big fan of hitting it hard from the yard if you got a crew. But if you don't right. have a crew, what else are you going to do? Right. Right. You have to no choice. Until Correct. the next engine gets there? Correct. You know? Yeah. So yeah, some guys have to knock it down from the outside. I, I resent the guys that, that pull up with a four-person crew and don't go through the front door first. For a shit <laughs> fire. Yeah, they got five because guys on the guy roof. came up with some scientific experiment yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhere and ran a video on it. And I'm not minimizing, you know, those folks either that, that did those experiments and because a lot of that was legitimate stuff. However, the point that I made, my good friend Butch Cobb, Butch Cobb's retired deputy chief from uh, Jersey City, great guy and a good, good friend of mine. And he said something to me one day during this whole, he's, a, he's another guy out there doing lectures and stuff. And, and he said something to me that stuck, and I repeated it a, a thousand times. I don't care where the fire is. I don't care how big it is. If there's people inside a burning building, there's only one way to save them. You know what it is? Go in and get them. Now, I hate to yeah. say that as a captain of the engine and the author of the engine book, but you know what? You can put any fire you out from any from anywhere you want, inside, outside, through the roof, from the basement. Eventually, somebody's going to have to go in and get those people if they're in there. Right. Putting the fire out does not save people. It helps them, but it doesn't save them. You still got to go in and get them, you know? Mm. So these guys thinking about going down a driveway and hitting it in the window for 10 or 20 seconds to knock it down, then they go back to the front. I only ask them one question. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? And it's for themselves. Yeah, it's for it's you. To, right, to, right, 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 right. Maybe they're a little bit better. Right. I said, don't you know there's a grandma laying in a hallway with a ba- with, 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 with a mm. nightgown on? You know, <clears throat> so what do you think, from 1,800 degrees to 800 degrees? Do you think it makes a difference to her? What is she going to do, roll over now? No, you still got to go save her, you know? So anyway, I, got, I don't like to rant and rave about it too much, but – one of my one of my themes is get your ass in there and put the fire out. You know, I don't know how, how you don't really need a PhD or anything to figure no. that out. You know, no, yeah. What does what does Galeon say? Balls and water, and we could teach you to rest. That's it. Right? Balls and heart. <laughs> oh, heart. Right, 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 right. We do most of our work in the dark on our knees. We know the other people. <laughs> <doing work. laughs> <laughs> Good point. Uh, <laughs> and you know what it is with these companies too in the rest of the country? Sometimes it's an engine coming in doing truck work. It's not always a truck. They don't have truck companies, you know. They all got to know but, everything. That's right. Yeah, no yeah. specialist like us. I, I tell a funny funny story about being at a job one time. I'm in 48. We're at the top of the stairs. We still got a dry line. We're going up to the third floor or whatever. And we're pulling a hose. We look down the stairs. There's two guys from the truck at the bottom of the stairs standing. They're standing on the hose. Now, they don't realize it, but they're standing on the hose. We're pulling the hose saying, get off the hose. They're like, oh, this is ours? We brought this here? Like, they don't even know we bring hose to a fire. They think it goes out when they break the windows, you know? But <laughs> not the rest of America. They all know yeah. how to do everything because they don't have enough people to be specialized. Right. Yeah. Hey, Chief, Joe, Joe, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Joel Kanaski said, give the old man a hello for me. <laughs> Joel's a good man. He is. Listen, He's been in there all night. Bon Air, right? That's where he lives? Joel Kanaski? Oh, I don't know. We're, we're living the dream. That? He's living the dream somewhere. I don't There's know. a lot of guys in the chat. Chief Cleos is in the chat. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, from, Jerry uh, Murtha was in there. Yeah, but the other guy from... Uh, he was the captain of Squad 1. Um, oh, Keesling. I saw Keesling yeah. in there. Keesling's in there, too. Keesling yeah. was one of my firemen. He was yeah. one of my firemen when I was lieutenant of Squad 1. He would ah. come out of the fire seat, his helmet would be on fire. He was a tough <laughs> He is a tough did he, have his, did he have his cowboy boots on all the time, right? <laughs> I, love, I love Jimmy Keesley. I remember hearing him walking down the hall, like with his cowboy boots on. He would always have his cowboys on. Oh, what is J- uh, K- uh, J- Joel Kanansky says? Yes, in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean. In the That's Caribbean. where he is in the Caribbean? Yeah, yeah. In the Caribbean. Bon Air is where he lives. Yeah. Oh, good for him. Good for you, Joel. Get it done over there. Excellent. Joel, you better keep that 50. Uh, 
He's walking uh, around just with a, a, a fig leaf. You know what I mean? He doesn't own any trousers. <laughs> he doesn't own any long sleeve, long long pants. He only owns shorts. That's a shorts. That's really. A bitch. I don't I like him. It, I like him even. I dislike him even more now. That's I it. hope it's shorts and not a thong. Not nothing, not Joel. I don't want to see you in a thong. You know what I'm saying, bro? Make it. He said banana hammock. He's working. Banana, banana hammock. hammock. <laughs> he got a dirty mind. <laughs> he got a dirty mind. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where Pete. Pete took it in a box or something. I don't know where he went. <laughs> Pete took it in a run somewhere. All right, let's get to the next book, Chief. So uh, Five Alarm Leadership, From Firehouse to the Fireground. That came out in 2013. You hooked up with a guy, Rick Lasky. He was a – I think he was a chief from where? Louisville, Texas or something like Louisville, that? Louisville, Texas, one of my, my best bud in the world. He and I travel around now together teaching all he over the country. He teaches a lot. He's uh, – Don't you do a podcast, you do the podcast with him? Say again? Don't you do a podcast? You do the podcast? Yeah, old school. We, we, we have a podcast called Old School. And, and we do it. Uh, we send one out about every six or seven weeks or something like that. And uh, mm. we just get together when we're at a, when we're teaching somewhere. We go up to the hotel room and we talk about something. And, and mm. we keep them short, like 25, 30 minutes. But uh, we're good friends. We met teaching five on a survival. Different classes, but it's like in the same location. Eventually, they put us together. We started to work together. We became friends. And now we travel all over the place and, and, and do all sorts of stuff together. So we wrote that book. We came up with that book. That book is actually the result of a program. We have a full-day program that we teach on leadership, and we turned it into a book. So that uh, that was very popular as well. Yeah. Are, are these still – they're all on Amazon? or uh, where, where They're they everywhere. Go? They're mostly available through fire engineering. They sell – they they the ones that – but you can get them all on Amazon as well. I saw them on that's Amazon. Actually, yeah. that's an audio book as well, and I don't recall who it is, but we did it about <laughs> two years ago. Uh, Five Alarm Leadership is also available on, on audio book. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, what else you got, Ruffy? Because we ain't got so that's three. Here, so. so that's three books. I actually Tell us about the fourth book. one. Oh, that's what we want to yet. talk about. It's not published right. yet. Fire Engineering has it. I'm not sure. It's going to come out this year, 2022. Uh, it's called The Fire Scene. Uh, the Fire Scene is the column that I write in Firehouse Magazine. And although it's being published by a different group, Firehouse doesn't do books. Fire Engineering does. Uh, I named the book The Fire Scene because what it is is it's about – of 15 years of my back page articles all put together into a book. So I, I write the back page every single month on different topics. I sort of group them together like offices and probie stories and chief stories and, and tools and tactics. And, and I made like 10 or 12 page, uh, 10 or 12 chapter book. And they got it now with all the pictures and they're putting all the, you know, the cover together and all that other stuff. So hopefully that'll be out this year. So it's coming out You're this busy. fellow. What is it what about uh, you got to be in uh, Indy doing any uh, lectures on the circuit? What do you got? Yeah, I go to Indy every year. That's a big show. You know, a couple of thousand, 20,000, 30,000 firemen take over Indy every year. And uh, they got a lot of instructors there, a lot of classes. They used to do hands-on as well, but no more hands-on. I do two or three two or three programs there uh, uh -huh. during that week. It's a great. What are, you, uh, what are you doing this year? You got to be there this year. You got anything new? Yeah, you gonna... yeah, I'm doing a I'm doing a leadership program there, a pre conference seminar. <laughs> then we're doing a big room. Uh, Bobby Hall is the editor in chief. My buddy Rick, myself, John Norman, retired FDMY. John, we're, mm. we're doing a uh, I'm trying to think of what they call it, like like the, like the big room session where we all sit up there on a couple of chair chairs and couches, and we just sort of do what we're doing right now. We talk about different topics. We take questions from the audience and. So we're, we're going to do that this year as well. Hey, right. uh, you've been. That <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you home? You go home? I just figured that's just like a chief to uh, to say that. I don't know. We blew a fuse, so I, I got no internet. I'm just working off the phone. But All right. All right, Pete. Nice to see you back with the yellow hat on. Excellent. Beautiful. Goopalini. You got the Goopalini on. The Goopalini. Hey, how do we get the – we have to get the John Norman's number, too. We get that guy on the show as well. Oh, uh, John's great. Yeah. Does, yeah. he, does he teach, Chief? Does he te he's still teaching? With him, he does it, right? No, no, I know, but I'm saying, is he still doing the whole thing? Oh, John's out there. John just wrote a book. I just oh, give it to oh, him. Get that one going, he's too. John Norman, working. working with Giants. Great oh, we got oh, to get, get him on, then. Oh, you got to get him on, yeah. He's got to push that book. So your Here's book, you said, is coming out. Here's you another guy. Who's that? I can't read that. What is it? Oh, yeah. Farrell. Oh, Bobby Farrell. Yeah, we uh, listen. Listen, Chief. I've been going back and forth with him. He wants to come on. He doesn't want to come on. He wants to come on. He doesn't want to come on. I don't know. Uh, he's maybe, great, man. He's maybe he give a little whoop. 
a little push you give him a little push maybe you know what I'll I mean? give him a buzz I'll give him a buzz uh, <laughs> Peter, you really are at the kitchen table no huh? quite literally I, I got I got uh, I'm using the internet off my phone which isn't too bad as a nice backup I'm finding out and uh you know we're all surviving right. but that's all right moving on let's, let's not make the show about that Oh, no, we're not going to make it about that. We're going to make it about Chief Salka. This is the best show they've had, I think, so far. No sound effects, unfortunately. So That's okay. We'll do the uh, best we can. Uh, Chief, I wanted to ask you, what was, what was some, ahead. like, really, like, the big job? Like, did you, ha did, did you have any of the, the big jobs in the Bronx or, uh, like, uh, the, the explosions or with the Chief or any of that stuff? Did you have any of those jobs up there? Like, what was the big job that you had up there that you you, you thought about? Did you have the club job? Did you have any of those jobs? I, I'm not sure if I had any of the named, like, memorable jobs. Yeah, right. I mean, That's what I was talking seemed about. Like, every job I went to was a pretty good job. But uh, most of them were unknown to anybody else after the job was over. You know what I'm saying? Right, you could right, right, Bronx right, right. And I, You could go to six jobs and rescue three, and they wouldn't know it. And if rescue one... You know, shows up somewhere. It makes the front page. Right. I, guess. I got to ask you that when I called you the last time. I wasn't too sure if you were at any of those, like uh, you know, if we lost a guy or something like. Tell that. you what, I went to. Uh, I, I was I was only at one job where somebody was lost, and it was actually in Manhattan for some reason. I went on a multiple where where somebody, where one of our guys died. But I went to a couple of mutual aid jobs up like to Yonkers and stuff like that. That was that was really? always very interesting going up there. Yeah, that was. Again, the minute you cross the line, you're down to like three or four guys on a rig instead of five or six guys on a rig, you know? And yeah. uh, they try hard, too. They work as hard as we do, maybe harder. They get less guys, you know? Yeah, they do some work, too, man. They get some oh, work. Absolutely. Yeah, they got some crappy areas there. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So what? What do we know the dates for uh, Indy? Because we're going to be there with the Chiefs. So I think uh, no, we I probably, to... I probably would know the dates if it was in front of me, but uh, I don't remember. Nothing. I'm going to look right now because we're going to have to buy the we got to go out to dinner with the Chief now. I don't Maybe even it's... know if they're going to have it uh, again, like the way things are going. They already canceled the Long Island one of the Long uh, Island. No, they're having it. Yeah? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, the, the one Long Island is canceled, but the other one is still going. In April. FDIC yeah. is April 25th to uh, the 30th. 25th mm -hmm. to the 30th of April. That's yeah. better than that. Last year was in August. That sucked. It was hot. We're going to have to go. We have to grab the Chief and go out to dinner one night on Ruffy. How do you like that? Yeah. I, don't, I don't cramp up. No, Chief, we take care of ourselves out there and we go away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to hook up with you out there and we're going to take you, you out to dinner. I'm out there the whole week. I'm out there the whole week. Uh, we're not out there the whole week, but we will definitely hook up with you on uh, April 20-something or other. Is there, was there anything else you wanted to talk about, Chief, before we maybe shoot to the old school tip? Whatever whatever, you, whatever your program calls for, I'm, I'm good. All yeah. right, Katie, sing it. I'll do it. You may do it because Pete did it. Hold on, I got it. You got it? Go ahead. Well, kind of. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. We're going to find it. Uh, oh, you you going to try and pull it out? I'm trying to. You know, I have it. Uh, What's he looking for? The video? The music. The old tip of the day. The music. Uh, oh, okay. I was going to let him sing it. I just don't have my board in front of me now. Somebody so. wants to know what All your right. favorite company worked in, Chief. Somebody in the chat. The one I was in. Work. The one I was in. At that time, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm not and I'm not kidding. No, it's every trip we had was a great outfit, and the next one was a great outfit, and the next one. And I can only tell guys that are thinking about you know studying. Some guys say, Oh, I love this place that I'm in. I, I can't imagine leaving here. I said, study, study, study. You'll get the next place after two years, you'll feel the same way about that's that. A good, that's you know? great advice, right there. That is the truth, you know. Yeah, it really is. It. Let's see if we can <clears throat> where, uh before you do that, Chief. Where is your son working? Let's give him a shout out tonight. He's down in what, yeah. North Carolina? My, my son, actually, you know, it, it's not a long story, but he's a firefighter in North Charleston, South Carolina. His right. wife's a police officer in North Charleston, South Carolina. They both recently quit. Both really? North Charleston required them to get the vaccine. Oh, the vaccine. They were going to be fired. Both of them said, we're not getting the vaccine. Bye. And they left. And right now they're traveling the country on the road. And oh! Well, they right, think they're going to end up in Texas. The plan maybe is to go to Texas yeah. and get back on a job there where they're not right. required. But uh, they're taking a couple of months off and traveling around with my first grandbaby. Wow. Yep. Oh, wow. Good for that, man. They're really, they're really You scary. know, a lot of respect yeah. to them for putting themselves out there like that, too. So uh, yeah, really, really no doubt. appreciate those guys. It's easy lot. to talk to talk. It's easy to talk, talk to talk. 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 Yeah, yeah, man. Like, right. Good for them. Yep. Unbelievable. Good for wow. them. Awesome. 
Are you still volunteering at all? Uh, you live by Louie, yeah, don't you? I'm up here in the middle of the woods, up in Orange County, and it's all volunteers up here. So it's uh, you know, I joined just to be part of the part of the solution. You know, yeah. Sometimes two or three guys show up for a fire. That's it. Yeah, yeah, you, ever, you, ever, you ever steal a nozzle or two up there? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think my nozzle days are over. You know? <laughs> I was going to say, I like if this. Somebody else shows up. I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> all <laughs> right. Saying. I, I like, like staying it. in my slippers. That's what I like to sleep. <laughs> all right, Pete, you got the music yet or what? Should I, I do, do it? But I, let's see if it even works, all right? So here we go. Let's give it a try. It's time for... Oh! Yeah, Katie. Old school tip. Look at oh, you. Yeah, Katie. Katie. Good Katie. job, Katie. Good job. All right, Take it away, Chief. all on you, sir. You know... I, I talk to people all the time. People ask me to come talk at graduations and, and advice for that kid who's just getting on a job and stuff like that. And the one thing, and, and it's sort of been a, a topic in the fire service in the last couple of years is them, them. And I keep telling guys that all the time. It's not about us. It's about them. And you, and you see it all the time. I, I just wrote a note down. I watched something last night. Uh, anybody watching Yellowstone? If you're watching Yellowstone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm watching series uh, four now. Right. And, uh, the ranch comes first. That's what that cowboy told that young kid. The ranch comes first, and you forgot about that. And you know what? The people come first. They come first. The citizens come first. It's not about us. It's not about staffing. It's not about this. It's not about that. Hitting it hard from the yard. Get your ass in there and put the fire out. Go on runs. Turn out quick. Train and be ready. I don't know why you want to be a fireman if you don't want to just take care of everybody ahead of yourself. And there's a book out there called The, the Mission, The Men, and Me. The mission comes first. And for us, that's the job. For us, that's putting the fires out and turning out quickly. You know, the men is next. That means your crew. And if you're a boss, you're third in line. You're not you're not first in line. You're third in line. So that's, that's my tip of the day is remember that. Remember that they come first, and we're here to serve everybody else, and we'll take care of ourselves when it's all over. That's, I just that's want true. to co-sign that book, by the way, The Mission, The Men, and Me. Phenomenal book. Everyone Phenomenal knows. book. And the whole Everyone thing is knows. about military – but it relates directly yeah, to the fire perfectly uh, right yeah, across. Chief, great, great tip, Chief. What a great show! Great, I really yeah, appreciate. You know, the you more sharing. I talk to, to, to you guys, the older, mm -hmm. the older generation, right? The the sixties, seventies, eighties guys. Did you just they, call me older? Did you just call older, me older? Older. I said older. I, I didn't say old. Did. I said I older. Did. I said older. <laughs> I'm sixty three and I'm going skiing this weekend. Older. Okay? Nice. What what a good crew cut. Without a He's doubt. not that much older than us. What are you talking about? I'm He's not saying, that much older than us. I'm trying to make a fucking point. Is right, that the older point. generation? They, you could tell they put <laughs> the mission. He said first. older again. He said they, older again. They put the mission. Let me tell you first. something. I love the term old school. That's why Rick and I picked it for our right. for our podcast. We call it old school. Uh, because that's all I am. I can't. I can't help it. I'm old school. You know. And I've been doing shit for a long time the same way, and it works. Guys, come up with. V E I S instead of V E S. I mean, they want to invent yeah, something, yeah, yeah. Or something old, you know. I mean, I guess new ideas are good. Eventually, some new shit catches on, but there, I don't know. Chief, there was a video of a guy, and again, say what you want. You know, there's a camera everywhere now. There was a woman on the first floor at the window. There we go. Smoke porn out behind her. There was a guy, a fireman, quote unquote, <laughs> full gear. Putzing around with his mask, his face piece to, you know, put his face piece on, his hood, his flaps down. He's going through this whole process. A civilian runs over. I don't know if you saw this video. Jumps in the window and helps the woman out of the window and then jumps out while this guy is doing what? He, like what you said. He's, I did see it. He is concerned about himself before the people, right? And that, and I think that's what I, I was – the point as I was trying to make was – Years ago, that was never even a thought, right? You you didn't think none of those guys. They had nothing. They were going in with blue jeans for God's sakes, right? They they weren't concerned about them. They were concerned about doing the job, whatever was it was. Reading, I was reading Bob Farrell's book in the break between the pre-show and and the show tonight, and and one of the things he was talking about, he said, "Ah, oh, I used to love going down the block when when there was fire showing, because it meant there was going to be a little bit more air in there for us to breathe." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Once it's out the windows, yeah, it lights yeah, up yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And obviously that's different. We wear masks now. We were wearing the old steel tank when I first got on a job with the rubber hose and all that other stuff. And we didn't wear it at every single fire, but eventually we did. And, and there's nothing wrong with staying healthy and wearing a mask. Don't oh, get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not silly old school, but 
But the bottom line is you should be ready. You shouldn't be getting dressed in front of the fire building. You should be getting dressed before you get on the ring, you know, and I'm, I don't know. I'm spoiled. I worked in all great places my whole career in, in probably the greatest fire department in the world. I'm sure there's a couple of shit shows out there, but all the places I worked were great places and everybody performed. And it was always about them, not the firefighters. It was always about the people that were calling us. You know, they're the ones that are looking for help. I would like to thank you for that older view. Of not <laughs> <laughs> not very good. <laughs> My word. He looks younger than you, Coops. Anyway. Uh, you ain't shit, bro. Are you kidding me? I swear to God, he does. Yeah. He looks good. Uh, man. Chief, thanks so much. I knew it was going to be a great show. We waited for a long time to get you, and it was well worth the wait. And we appreciate I'm you. I'm very on. happy. It turned out very well. It was a good time. Uh, with where do we get? Where do we see your podcast, for guys? Uh, I'm going to put the link up on the uh, on the YouTube on our YouTube channel in the description. Don't ask I'll me where it is. I just I'll, don't I'll, name I'll, it. I'll take care of it, Chief. I'll put it all in the uh, description. We'll do it. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks again, Chief. And really the books. Appreciate all it. the links to the books I'll put oh, in the description. The can I, can Great I, job. Can I, can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Say five more things. What I have here is a nine eleven coin. And uh, anybody know Ray Phillips from Rescue Three? Of course. Yeah. Ray retired a couple of years ago. He's a good friend of mine. He passed away in 17, 9-11 related. And we all know guys are dying now, 9-11 related. In Washingtonville here where I live in this little town, we lost five guys on 9-11. You know, Jerry Nevins and, and, and oh, wow. Bobby Hamilton and Dennis oh, Devlin. And it was just tragic. And now we're losing more guys. Now we, we lost Ray Phillips and we're losing a couple other guys. So we're putting another small monument up. And we're selling 20-year coins. And you, you can contact me at my email, which is chiefjohnsalka at gmail, if you're interested in one of these coins. And when we can work out on email, if you're interested in buying one, I can send it to you and stuff like that. I, we're just trying to raise money to, to put a new stone I'll in there. That, I'll put that in the description as well. Worth, worth Worthwhile uh, worthwhile effort. All right, guys. Doing. Get your money out. Let's get those coins. I'm going to get one. Excellent. Yeah, I actually I grew up. Bobby Hamilton was a good friend of my brother's. He was always in my house. Yeah, uh, Bobby was a good man. Yep. Yeah, yeah 41 guy. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, right. Chief, thank you so much. We'll see you. We're definitely going to go out to dinner in oh, uh, Indy. You, you, you can guys, you guys can bring me out to eat. Absolutely, yeah, we definitely will. No we doubt. Don't, we don't cramp up. Oh, believe me, we don't cramp up when we go out. No, we'll uh, uh, are the wives yeah. watching? Are the wives watching? Hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we just hot dogs. <laughs> hey, you want to have three hot dogs, Corey? Forty-eight and fifty-six. Captain came in there one day and said, "Hot dogs again." They had hot dogs for, for lunch and dinner for 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, Petey boy. Can you do your thing from there? Can you take us out of the show? Yeah. Anybody have some shout outs before we do? I have. I got one shout out. There's just, uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm not sure where this email should be redirected, but my dad is a huge fan of the podcast and, bar and barely ever misses a live show. He has been a firefighter for many years, but was a professional fighter from March 13, 20, 2000 to 21. I know my dad would absolutely be tickled if you guys on the podcast gave him a shout out. Lance Johnson, engineer from Ladder 351, 22 years of service, Altoona Fire Department, IAFF Local 299. So, congrats on your your retirement. Nice. Excellent, excellent, okay. guys. Don't forget the beach, the getting salty beach party down in Florida. Contact Jose or Gonzo or Alan Shup and. Punch your ticket, baby. We're going to have a good time. We got our airline tickets. We're going down there. So whether you come or not, oh, yeah. the next day, the uh, the uh, St. Paddy's Day Parade is supposed to be off the chart with a lot of guys. So come down, have a good time. But uh, I'm going to start now. I'm going to say this every day till we, till we go to that thing. Remain calm and respectful when we go down there. We'll be having it at a, at a place that uh, probably um, – we don't want the guys to get out of control. So let's just like no. we did that the fly, yeah, firemen get out of control. Just like we did at the 9 11 ceremony, everybody stays respectful. We'll have a good time. We can drink, eat, we'll have a good time. But everybody, you know, unless I ask my man Pete's going to have to throw you in a pretzel with his Brazilian jiu jitsu. You know what I mean? I don't have to throw you in a pretzel. Right, Pete? 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 No, nothing. I'm good. Oh, I got my last word in already. I think Pete's gone. I think Pete's done. Pete's frozen. You guys oh, we got it. you now. I don't want you to have to uh, bend anybody into a pretzel, bro. So, all right, that's all I got. Take us out, Pete, before you lose your internet again. Hey, all right, you, everybody got me now? Yeah. Yep. All right, quick quick shout out to all the new guys. Uh, everybody new who's watching the show, thank you guys mm -hmm. very much. 
Um, am I breaking up or am I good? You're, no, you're good. good. All right. Great. Uh, real quick, guys, I'm going to run through the banners real fast. iTunes podcast, Spotify. Oh, shit. It's it's breaking up on my end, guys. You guys know where to find us by now already. I can't yeah. even. I can't even. Uh, you're good. You're good. I'm good. Yes. Yeah. Just get through it. All right. Man, well, all. for some reason, I can't put up the banners, but guys, check us out on iTunes podcast, Spotify, or wherever fine audio podcasts are found. If you're here, remember to like, subscribe, and share. Instagram.com, guys, go or Instagram rather at Salty Dog Inc. Getting saltyapparel.com, guys. That's how we. Uh, that's how we pay the bills. Thanks to everybody in the super chat. Uh, Facebook, getting salty fans page, guys. Thank you so much uh, for starting that and keeping it going. Uh, getting salty experience at gmail.com, guys. That's where you will be able to um, uh, uh, email us for any any reason on the show. If you have questions, uh, Coops Podcast at gmail.com for all the Cup of Joe stuff. You guys know the deal helmet cam, fire footage. All that good stuff. And that is all the news that's fit to print awesome. with no internet. <laughs> all right. P uh, Ruffy, we got the Chicago guy on Thursday night, right? Yes. Okay. We got a uh, hard charger from Chicago Thursday night. Uh, once again, Chief, thank you. It was an honor to have you on. I had a great time. We'll see Thanks, you in guys. Indy. Appreciate stay on, it. Uh, stay on after we have. Oh, I don't know where Pete went. You left. I just I leave. I don't know how to get out of the show now. Oh, Pete, can you take us out? Yeah, I'll take you out, guys. Sorry about this. Anyway, That's okay. We will, Stay uh, on. We want to talk to you afterwards. All right. Stay on, Chief. All right, boys. Uh, see you all on the next one. See you.